Welcome into Five Wide Fantasy. Today, we're getting into our running back rankings for week nine of the fantasy football season. I've got my top 30 for you today. Should get through just about every matchup to help you set your fantasy lineups this week. If you guys do enjoy today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that like button, subscribe to the channel as well if you're new, and let's get into these rankings. Number one running back on the week, Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. No Christian McCaffrey, new number one guy. Uh, Las Vegas, obviously really struggled last week against Detroit's running game, and Saquon getting serious, serious volume. It looks like Daniel Jones will be back, so that should have an impact on Saquon's uh, volume volume, but I would expect them to still be super efficient here. Las Vegas, 28th in fantasy points allowed to the running back position. At two, Austin Eckler. Look, the Chargers, so long as they are running with a hobbled Josh Palmer, a completely unproven Quentin Johnston, Eckler is going to be super involved in the receiving game moving forward, but also in a matchup with the Jets. Uh, the Jets are a team that have been very, very stout against the pass. Has still been solid against the run, uh, but not quite to the same degree, obviously. 19th in fantasy points allowed to running backs. Eckler will be an important point here, being able to move the football. Look, and the Chargers can't run the ball, so it's really going to come down to the receiving game, but Eckler's obviously been great converting touchdown opportunities as well, so he should be very serviceable there. At three, Alvin Kamara. Kamara getting Chicago. I think Chicago is still in pretty solid run defense, just when you look at the overall makeup of this roster. This is a team that's going to be in a lot of trailing games, or a lot of game scripts where the opponents are leading, so they can lean on the run game. That's why they're 24th in fantasy points allowed to running backs, but they're actually third in EPA against the run, and look, Kamara doesn't run super efficiently, but we know he can do what he can do as a receiver. Combine that with he should see some significant volume here in the running game. He's going to be an excellent start for you this week. As we look to see what Jamal Williams' role ends up being, because right now he is on a snap count of sorts, uh, we'll keep Kamara as one of these elite guys uh, until I see something different from Jamal Williams there. At four, Jonathan Taylor. Taylor getting into a really plus matchup here, starting to grow a bit of a larger role here over Zach Moss, but both these guys are definitely startable assets. Carolina, recommending for me to be a very, very plus matchup. Dead last in fantasy points allowed. Two running backs on the season and also uh, dead last in run defense grade, 30th in EPA against the run. So obvious spot here for the Colts to lean on their run game. Taylor should be a major beneficiary there. This is the highest I've had him so far this season. At five, Brees Hall. The Jets are going to have a great opportunity here to move the ball through the air against this Chargers really lackluster secondary and their run defense has looked pretty damn solid. Like the Bears did not move the ball on the ground whatsoever this past week. Chargers have been slowly moving up here in the rankings when it comes to their performance against fantasy running backs. Now 21st, so still a pretty solid matchup here for Hall. He is the driving force of this offense as he looked more and more healthy. Definitely expect to get a big week out of him uh, both as a runner and a receiver in this one. Six, Derrick Henry. Henry playing on Thursday night. Know he's dealing with a little bit of an injury label here heading into the week. Do expect him to play and the Steelers represent a great matchup. 27th in fantasy points allowed to running backs on the season uh, and 20th, yeah, 20th in EPA against the run. So Henry should be leaned on quite a bit. I know a lot of people wowed with the Will Levis performance. I thought it was really just a couple of explosive plays, not so much down to down basis. Uh, I think you're going to still get a heavy dose of Henry here in a plus matchup. Seven, Bijan Robinson. Robinson getting the Minnesota Vikings this week. The Vikings now without Kirk Cousins are really going to have to lean on that defense, and they've been very good against the run so far this season. Seventh in fantasy points allowed, seventh in EPA against the run. A lot of this comes down to being a team defensively that blitzes a ton, stacks the box quite a bit, so there aren't as many running lanes to get through, but if you get to the second level, you're going to find open space. Bijan can do a great job of doing that, so still expect to get a great week from him here, and we'll see what the uh, the Falcons do at the quarterback position there. That's still up in the air. At nine, Josh Jacobs getting the Giants. Giants continue to be one of the worst teams in the NFL against the run. 26th in fantasy points allowed, 24th in EPA against the run. There's another team that likes to blitz as well. Get into open space, find the second level, and you can definitely find explosive plays. Now, for the Raiders, that hasn't really been the case, but Jacobs has been really looked to quite a bit in the receiving game. Uh, we saw it this past week as well against the Lions, not getting the ball of the receivers, getting the ball of their tight ends and the Jacobs. Uh, rushing volume's always been high for Jacobs, so in a good matchup where they could potentially win this game and see a positive game script, Jacobs is definitely going to be a solid start for you. Nine, Joe Mixon. Getting the Bills this week, the Bills have been a team right at the precipice of being in that bottom 10 against the run, 22nd in fantasy points allowed. 23rd in run defense grade. Mixon looked like a completely different back than the one we've seen in the early parts of this season. Last week against San Francisco, just running mean, running hard, and obviously being a great play last week. I would expect that to be even more so the case here against Buffalo. The offense just looking much, much better for the Bengals. That's going to give Mixon those scoring opportunities. He's going to continue to be one of those guys that gets a ton of opportunities in that area, in the sorry, in the red area. So look for him with this offense now rolling to definitely be a guy found in my top 12 quite a bit here. At 10, this will be a surprise one for a lot of people, I think. Rashad White getting Houston. Houston is now more in that mid middle range run defense. 20th in fantasy points allowed, 17th in EPA against the run. But what I see here for White is an opportunity to be a little bit more efficient on the ground and when he gets into positive game scripts, he's a completely different back. I think he's scoring closer to 17 fantasy points a game in wins for the, for the Bucs compared to losses, which is far, far lower. I think it's less than double digits. This is a potential game to win for the Bucs and White usually benefits in a big way from that. So I like him this week quite a bit. At 11, Kenneth Walker. Walker getting Baltimore. I wanted to be lower on Walker this week, but as we 
we dive into these rankings, I'm not incredibly high on a lot of these guys behind him. I think this is a tough matchup. Baltimore, 13th in fantasy points allowed to running backs, but sixth in EPA against the run. I think running efficiently will be tough here, but we know for Walker, who leads the NFL and inside the five carries this season, if he gets, if this team gets into scoring areas, gets into the red zone, gets in goal to go situations, Walker will get his opportunities and can ultimately save his week with a touchdown, which is there's a good chance we see happening here. 12, Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco getting Miami in the morning in Germany. Off the down week there against Denver. Can definitely bounce back here. Miami's 29th in EPA against the run. I definitely think right now their passing defense is more of their strength than it is their run defense. Um, they're middle of the road in fantasy points allowed, 17th on the season. But again, Pacheco's role here is really, really solid. Receiving game, running game, uh, and this is a game here for the Chiefs that should be pretty competitive, uh, but we could see them leading here and Pacheco getting those opportunities. And right now, this is like with his role in a really, really good offense, this is kind of where he's going to be most of the season. 13, Raheem Mostert. I've seen some people far, far higher on Mostert Haynes this week. You know, Jeff Wilson getting a little bit more involved. I think that has an impact on how I feel about Mostert. Can we get scoring opportunities? This Chiefs defense has been fantastic. They're top 10 in fantasy points against to running allowed to running back so far this season. Definitely a great unit. Um, again, some of these other metrics are not quite as good. 25th in EPA, 25th in run defense grade. So this will, a lot of it will come down to, hey, are the Dolphins in this game? Can they get the ball to their backs? Can they run effectively? Because again, this offensive line isn't terrific, but uh, schematically for Mike McDaniel, definitely a terrific, terrific group. 14, DeAndre Swift. Swift getting the Dallas Cowboys this week. The Cowboys, solid, solid run defense. 11th in fantasy points allowed. 5th in run defense grade. Kenneth, Kenneth Gamewell struggles last week. I think we'll start to reduce, see his role reduced and Swift being utilized as pretty much a three down back for this offense, which is incredible, val incredibly valuable behind this offensive line and seeing this team as successful as it's been and in some positive game scripts. But also, Jalen Hurts is definitely playing pretty banged up. He's not running the football much this season. That's a direct benefit to Swift as getting more inside the five opportunities, more touchdowns opportunities and just more rushing volume. When they do want to run the football, they're going to have to do it the more traditional way. So that's going to elevate Swift here, even though this is a tough matchup. 15, James Cook. Cook getting, again, the Bengals. We talked about, about this game when we were talking about Joe Mixon. The Bengals have been a team that actually are bottom 10 in fantasy points allowed to running backs. When you play Christian McCaffrey, that can tend to happen. You tend to slide down a little bit in these rankings. So I don't necessarily think this is a bad unit, but again, some of the advanced metrics think they are. 29th in run defense grade, 28th in EPA against the run. We saw Latavius Murray's role reduce a little bit last week, which gives me a lot of a lot to get excited about in this particular matchup. I don't think we're going to see much of Leonard Fournette in this game, or if he will be elevated off the practice squad. Feel confident Cook heading into this week. Moving forward, that is where the question mark is. But right now, definitely someone I do want to start. 16, Chuba Hubbard going against the Colts. Hubbard's role, significantly more involved than Miles Sanders. We're going to go with that moving forward. Not surprising. Hubbard's been a, quite a bit better than Sanders on a down-to-down -down basis and with his opportunities so far this season. Both guys healthy and available. Hubbard was getting the majority role. Indy, 29th in fantasy points allowed to running back, so definitely a plus matchup for him. A game for the Panthers back at home, where I believe they're like a three-point underdog, so this game could be pretty competitive, give you that neutral script where Hubbard can get the football, which would definitely help him too, but he is more involved in the receiving game as well, so he's kind of a, a matchup-proof or game script-proof type of back at this point. 17, Daryl Henderson. Henderson getting Green Bay. Henderson definitely has the lead back role, I would say. Freeman getting that inside the five carry and touchdown last week muddies the waters a little bit, or else I'd probably have Henderson even higher, because Green Bay is a great matchup. Packers offense struggling immensely, and and as they have for years, have struggled defensively against the run. 25th in fantasy points allowed, 26th in EPA against the run. So we're definitely in a spot here for Henderson to have a solid week. We saw Freeman run more routes and Henderson get more rushing opportunities. I'm going to be wanting to play Freeman, but right now Henderson does have the edge in this offense and that's what I'll be rolling with moving forward. And then we'll see how things shake out this week, but I'm pretty confident in Henderson being definitely a guy you do want to play. And we'll see if he holds on to that lead back role over Freeman, who was a little bit more efficient than him last week. 18, Tony Pollard, very low on Pollard heading into this week. Look, it's been a lot of, of frustrating weeks with Tony Pollard um, as a back you drafted in potentially the first, second round of your fantasy drafts. Philadelphia, not a matchup you want to be playing your running backs in. First in fantasy points allowed to running backs, 11th in EPA against the run, fourth in run defense grade. This is a team you just can't run the ball effectively against, and Pollard hasn't done it this season against anybody. He's been one of the least efficient backs in the entire league. The volume will still be there. The opportunities will still be there, especially when you get inside the five, when you're looking for touchdowns for this Cowboys offense. So he's still a playable guy, obviously off of that volume, but he's not, in my mind, a top 12 guy this week, obviously, as my RB18. 19, Zach Moss. Talked about the great 
great matchup this is for Jonathan Taylor. It's equally a great matchup for Zach Moss. This team isn't afraid to use him in pretty much any scenario on the field. There is an opportunity for him to get touches in the red zone, touches inside the 10, inside the five. So definitely still like Moss this week as high as I am on Taylor. Moss is still an excellent start for you as well. 20, Brian Robinson getting New England. New England is second in EPA against the run. Been very stout against the run. It's going to be really interesting to see what this commander's defense is like without Chase Young, without Montez Sweat. Do they take a significant, significant step back from already not being a great defense so far this season? And do we see Robinson struggle to find a game script where he can run the ball quite a bit? We'll see. Chris Rodriguez was really involved two weeks ago. This past week wasn't really involved much at all. So Robinson back into that kind of bit more high volume lead role, whereas last week or the week prior was less of a high volume lead role. New England's 18th fantasy points allowed to running backs on the season. So there is still some hope here for Robinson to be able to have a solid week. Uh, and he's also been, you know, still getting some involvement in the receiving game, which is also good. 21, Ramondre Stevenson. I mentioned the concern here with how much of a step back the commanders take defensively. Sweat and Young are guys on the edge. They don't have a huge impact on the running, uh, on the running game and the run defense. I like Stevenson in this matchup in particular. 15th in fantasy points allowed are the commanders to running backs. 21st in EPA against the run. Stevenson has the edge here in snaps, getting on the field in the receiving game as well. I think this is a game here for the Patriots that they could have. So gives an opportunity here for Stevenson to get uh, a good amount of touches here. 22, Jerome Four. You would expect to see the Browns running backs a little bit higher in these rankings, but because it's so muddied with Pierre Strong getting involved in the fourth quarter last week, I think Jerome Ford also being kind of protected with his injury. Yes, he wanted to play. Yes, he felt like he could play. I feel like the Browns probably didn't feel the same way about him. I think Ford is still the lead back in this offense. The injury was expected to be like a one to two week timeline. So Ford could be fully healthy or close to it by kickoff on Sunday. So I do feel like he'll have the lead role. Arizona, obviously a fantastic matchup. 30th in fantasy points allowed to running backs. Got a chance here for the Browns to really get right offensively. Get back on the board with a win after falling to Seattle last week. I think Ford is the lead guy there. 23, Gus Edwards. Edwards getting C Seattle. This is a tough matchup. A lot of these numbers are like more middle of the road. 16th in fantasy points, 15th in EPA. But on a down-to-down -down basis and against the running game from an efficiency perspective, they've been one of the best in the league. They're giving up like 80, 90 yards rushing in total per game this season. And Edwards is so dependent on matchup and so dependent on positive game script to produce because he doesn't run much of any routes. Just, Justice Hill has the major advantage there. I don't feel confident in him unless I know this is a slam dunk matchup. He's still a playable asset because again, this is the number one back for a team that can score points for a game that they can still win. So I do want to start Edwards. I'm just not super high on him even coming off of the three touchdown week last week. 24, Aaron Jones. This Packers offense has just been absolutely brutal. The Rams have been pretty solid against the run, led by Aaron Donald in the middle of that defense. Ninth in fantasy points allowed, 11th in run defense grade. And Jones just obviously isn't completely healthy, so they're giving um, A.J. Dillon pretty much the same amount of, like, they're splitting these guys pretty similarly, with Dillon even having a bit of an edge. Shocked to see how involved Dillon was in the receiving game. Another week passes, Jones can be a little bit healthier. I think when Jones is healthy, he's definitely the guy they'd rather have as their lead back. So I'm not high on either one of these guys, but I am giving the edge to Jones here because I do expect this to change in short order. So that is why I have him as still a playable RB2 on the week. 25, Kareem Hunt. I mentioned the matchup. I know Pierre Strong was involved. Hunt was pretty solid with his opportunities. I know he had a little bit of a complaint there. He didn't really realize, couldn't understand why he wasn't involved in the fourth quarter. Could see that bounce back his way because Hunt has been solid the last couple of weeks. So in the plus matchup, I do think these are the two guys that they do roll with. If Ford is healthier, I think Strong's role will kind of dissipate. So I will still be playing Hunt as a decent flex option for you. 26, I'm already DiMarcado. DiMarcado's volume is something to play off of. If Kyler Murray does play, I don't think he will. DiMarcado is going to be someone more in my RB like 35 range, someone I don't want to play. But if we're getting Clayton Toon, the DiMarcado rushing volume should be significantly, significantly high, probably similar to the touches we saw from him last week because the Browns are an elite run defense, an elite pass rush. It's going to be incredibly tough for this Cardinals team if they're going to Clayton Toon in this spot against this pass rush to be able to drop back is going to be, again, incredibly tough. So look for them to lead on the run game. DiMarcado is definitely a very, a very low ceiling play. Could give you enough of a floor to get you to like 10 points on the week if you really need it if you're in a crunch with these bye weeks. Uh, but not a very exciting matchup here for DiMercado. 27, Royce Freeman. I mentioned the matchup here against Green Bay, definitely a positive one. And for Freeman, getting that inside the five carry, being a pretty efficient with his opportunities, getting on the field as a receiver. He is a playable asset for me this week, uh, just again with the matchup and still some uncertainty about who, who is going to have a clear lead role in this backfield. And Freeman, I think, still has a chance at, at getting some opportunities here. 28, Ezekiel Elliott. Mentioned this matchup with Washington. I think this is one that New England could potentially be in a positive game script for. Ezekiel narrowly leading by like a couple of carries. The fumble last week maybe has an effect on that, but leading in those in the rushing category. So still feel like you could play him in this matchup. Again, with a lot of backs having some really bad matchups here that we'll talk about after, and then some 
backfields with a little bit more uncertainty. 29, Alexander Madison. Look, I know the Vikings are going to be without Kirk Cousins. They're going to probably, they're going to go to Jaron Hall here with the start. That probably means they want to lean on their backs because Hall as a rookie and as a player with not much pedigree coming out of the draft, they probably want to protect the football. The best way to do that is running the ball. But man, Atlanta is so, so good against the run. Fourth in fantasy points allowed, fourth in EPA against the run, second in run defense grade from PFF. This is not a team you're going to run the ball effectively against. And Alexander Madison has been absolutely atrocious running the football. I think he was 12. I think he averaged one point nine yards per carry last week against Green Bay. And Green Bay is one of the worst run defenses in the league. I just can't trust him. There's no way I can trust him. Maybe we see more Cam Akers. We're closer to a split here. Akers obviously found in the end zone last week and not Madison. That makes me feel even less confident about playing him. But he, as of right now, he's still the number one back and they're going to have to lean on the run game. So I could see reason to play him, but just not very high on him. 30, Miles Sanders talked about his role falling off a little bit, but this is a really plus matchup. Third last in fantasy points allowed to running backs are the Colts. I don't think his role completely dissipates. So that's why I still think he could be a pretty bad, but uh, but not the worst flex option and certainly better than some of these guys we'll get to as some must sits. Okay, some of those must sits. Some of those guys I don't want to be playing. Uh, Najee Harris against Tennessee, definitely something I do want to avoid. I really respect the Titans run defense. Harris saw a couple of receptions to kind of elevate his week a little bit last week, but Warren is the guy running more routes. So relying on that receiving game isn't going to be enough. AJ Dillsmeyer will be 33 on the week. He's someone I don't want to rely on either in this particular matchup because again, I could see Jones get a little more opportunity. The matchup isn't great. Um, we also see Justice Hill here. Here. That's another guy I know. Like involvement in the receiving game is there. Rushing game is not. Tough match against Seattle. Don't want to start him. Um, Jeff Wilson, not quite there yet on the opportunities. Um, and then Damian Pierce as well. Someone I do not want to start either with the split, their lack of efficiency, and, and the matchup here as well. So I'm definitely, these are the, some of the players I do want to sit heading into this week. If there's any guys that I did miss or I didn't mention that you do want to hear my thoughts about, definitely drop those in the comments. We'd love to chat with you guys there. Again, if you guys enjoyed today's video, get some value from today's video, would appreciate it if you did hit that like button as well. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.